My Audi R8 is going. I've had it nine months and I've done almost 9,000 miles. I'm gonna talk you through everything that's been good and not so good about living with this Audi R8. I'm gonna start this video with things that haven't been so good about this Audi R8 and actually begin with problems I've caused myself. I managed to curb one of the wheels. If you look there, you'll see it's not that bad, but I'm not sure how easy it's gonna be to fix because you've got this part here that is diamond cut and then this part here that is powder coated. Uh. I did it actually when I was just driving through a width restrictor, didn't pay enough attention. Then I got a horrible feeling when you hit the curb and you know you've done some damage. Don't wanna curb those 20 inch alloy wheels which come as standard. Ah, f it, I didn't notice the mirror. I've noticed this really long scratch on it here. I think most of that will polish out, but that bit is quite deep. I'm not sure how it happened. Don't think it was me. Maybe someone walking past it in a car park and part of their clothing just or zip, just rubbing against the car. Annoying. Another problem I've experienced with this car is the brakes making a horrible like grinding sound when you press the pedal. Now that manifested itself after a couple of track days probably related. However, you would think that the carbon ceramic discs would be able to cope with more than a few track days. I think Audi just replaced the pads and it's been fine since. Anyway, let's move on to some other things about this car which aren't so good, which have nothing to do with me. It's just the way the car came. I did quite a lot of long journeys and one thing that I've really missed on this car is adaptive cruise control. All you can get is old fashioned cruise control, which is no good because essentially the roads are too busy that you're constantly disengaging it and engaging it, disengaging and engaging it because you're always meeting other traffic. You need adaptive cruise with auto steer to be able to just sit back and let the car do the hard work, which really does take the strain out of long distance drives, especially when you've been on a film shoot all day. Because the R8 is quite an old car now, it doesn't have wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, so you have to connect them via a cable. And there's not really a great amount of room in the center cubby to do that where the USBs are, and you end up like nipping your cables and so on and so forth. However, I got this device called an AA Wireless, and it then turns your car into wireless Android Auto. Really, really like that. However, using Android Auto, through the car's system, because this isn't a touch screen, is a bit hard, especially when you're trying to zip around the map and things like that, and use the different functions. Because you're trying to use this control wheel, and it's just a bit of a pain. Oh, she was a touch screen. And I suppose doing a touch screen through there isn't ideal. I'm pretty sure in the past, the Audi R8 was available with adaptive dampers, so you could change the modes between like sport and comfort. Doesn't seem to be available on it at all anymore. And it's a bit of a shame because the adaptive what the heck was that noise? Anyhow, the adaptive dampers did help smooth off the bumps. So this has just fixed rate dampers and overall the suspension isn't too firm, but you can get bounced about a little bit when you go over bumps and drain covers like I'm doing now. It's a shame that you can't get adaptive dampers. It's really odd on a car that's as expensive as this that it's just not available even on the options list. Oh well. In the past, the Audi R8's comfort seats were fitted with Isofix anchor points. However, for this latest version, they've removed them for some reason, which is really annoying because I haven't been able to fit a child seat to this, which means I've never been able to take my daughter Grace in this car. I don't know if that's actually a bad thing. No, it's, it is a bad thing, it is. Buying a new or used car? Then you need to visit CarWow and we'll help you find your perfect car at a price you'll love. Just answer a few simple questions about the car you want and our trusted dealers will come back to you with great offers. Then choose the offer that's right for you and contact the dealer directly through CarWow. No haggling, no fees, and on average, CarWow users save over £1,800. But what if you're not sure which car you actually want? No problem. Just watch our insightful video reviews, read our impartial expert advice, or use our helpful car buying tools to discover your ideal car in no time at all. No wonder 95% of customers surveyed said they wouldn't buy a car without CarWow. I've put a link in the description of this video and the pinned comment to take you directly to CarWow so you can see for yourself how it can help you or you can just click on the pop-out banner that should be appearing up there right now. Alternatively, just Google help me CarWow and my team and I will help you choose your perfect car and get it for a price your love. Now on with the video. 
This is something you have to do quite a lot with your Audi R8. Ah, oh, bear with me. Or can I have one of them? Oh, no. Sorry, mate. No, don't worry. I thought you were working here. Sorry. That's so rude of me. <laughs> so bad of me. That's cringe. Just embarrassed myself. I thought he was one of the attendants, like, refilling these. Okay, what's this going to cost? Oh, uh, yeah. I don't put the good stuff in. I don't put E5 in. I just go for just normal E10 because it gets through the fuel so much. And I spend a lot of time just driving this thing on the motorway and there's no point running it on the expensive 97. It's only 97 octane as well, the E5. And if it was 99, maybe. One advantage of standing here like this in the sunshine is I do get to admire the lovely green paint, the carbon fibre elements, the beautiful tan interior. Such a great looking car. Are oh, we going to click over the 100? Oh no, I think that's it. £85. And he won't get me all that far. As you can imagine, a 5.2 litre naturally aspirated V10 supercar with 620 horsepower isn't particularly fuel efficient. And this one has averaged 17.2 miles per gallon over the nine months I've had it. Though that does take into account all the drag races I've done with it. Yes! Way boy! <laughs> <laughs> which has probably made that figure a bit worse than it otherwise would be. I actually think that's acceptable for this kind of car. Still, it has cost me £3,500 in fuel over the nine months. That's the reason why I haven't gone on a holiday this year. Oh well, it's worth it. One of the things I like about the coupe version of the R8 is that you can see the engine underneath the glass screen. However, on this Spider, all you can see of the engine is a little bit if you glance through there, you can see the top of the rocket covers just. It's a shame. It's a beautiful thing. One of the problems I've had with this car is that it doesn't always launch consistently. It can bog down, so you don't get anywhere near the claim 0 to 60 time of 3.2 seconds. I'll try and do it now to show you what I mean. So, left foot on the brake. There, hear that bog? So it's spread its wheels. 4.6 seconds, it's rubbish. It's really odd, even when it's dry, sometimes it does it. In fact, here's me having the problem with the car bogging down in some drag races. Bogged. Pointless. Sometimes it does just hook up and it does the business. And here's an example of it actually hooking up and putting in a good time. <laughs> it's pretty good for me. Yes, come on! That is quite a difference, isn't it? Why can't you hook up like a Porsche 911? They always hook up. This, The location of the cup holders isn't ideal. Just here. Which means that you end up putting your elbow into your drink and sometimes knocking it over. Fortunately, they had the top on. On the rare occasions that I've actually cleaned this car, I've noticed a bit of a problem. So obviously you clean the car with the roof up. I'd normally use soap and water and give it a polish as well. But then when you take the roof down, you know, on a sunny day, you want to show off your nice sparkly car, you notice this. <laughs> so can you see this bit of the roof? It actually covers part of the rear deck. So when you put the deck back down, you get out and you look at it, you realize that this part of it is still dirty. And you really notice that on a sunny day. It's just like, Bleh. As you can imagine, the R8 isn't particularly practical. The boot is not the largest, so there's not that much you can fit in it. So it is better than my GT3 RS. That doesn't even have a front boot. Anyhow, I did encounter a problem with this boot. You see, I lent this car to cameraman Adam, and when he was driving it to Wales, the oil warning light came on, so he got the carton of oil, topped it up, all was good. And he left the carton in this boot. And I don't think he tightened the top particularly well. Then one day when we were drag racing, I put this jacket, well actually a jacket just like this, in the boot. 
and under the brake test or something like that, I think the top popped off the oil carton and went all over the jacket, at which point I needed to get a new jacket. So thank you, Adam. Thank you. I don't know why I'm blaming the car's boot for that, but anyway, it still hurts. One thing that really disappoints me about the interior of this car are the paddles. So I drive this mainly in manual mode. I don't bother with automatic, even though automatic is good. And it's a real shame that the paddles are just made out of the cheapest material known to man. So while shifts are good, you don't get any pleasure through your fingers when you're making those shifts. Now by comparison, the paddle shifters in my 911 GT3 RS are the best in any car I've ever driven because they've got like this metallic click. Oh. However, they're not standard. You have to pay extra for the vice app pack to get those. But even on standard Porsches with a PDK gearbox, you have metal paddle shifters. And really, Audi, this is just not good enough for the rest of this car. It's a hundred and like sixty thousand pounds. This car, and I've got paddle shifters out of the most basic entry-level small hatchback. The reversing camera is quite low down and as a result it gets covered in road grime and because there isn't a washer on it you effectively have to jump out of the car lick your finger and give it a wipe like that slightly gross but at least now you can see more clearly anyway that brings you on to what has been great about living with this audi r8 the audi r8 has one of the best sounding cold starts ever go on start it up That's probably not very good for me, but I am going to miss that noise. Not sure where my neighbours are though, when that goes off at 5am in the morning when I'm heading off for a long drive up for a drag race shoot. I have noticed that it's starting to rattle a bit. So it's loose somewhere. I don't know what it is. And there we go, it's off cold start now. Can you hear the rattle? It's a little bit of piping probably loose or a heat shield in there. Still is going back, not my problem now. One of the things that I really like about the Audi R8 is that for a supercar, it's very easy to drive because you've got such good visibility. The dash isn't particularly high and the bonnet is short, so you've got a good view forward, you've got a good idea what's in front of you. Yeah, you've got these thick pillars here, but the windows are big, the view out the door mirrors is good, and the back window is really close to you, so you can see quite well behind you as well. Much better visibility than I think a Porsche 911 has. Also, the turning circle isn't bad at all. It's 11.2 meters. I'm not sure I'm gonna make it round here. In fact, I've really cut this up. But it's the same as a Porsche 911. Well, a Porsche 911 without rear wheel steering. But it does help that you've got the cameras and that great visibility just makes it easy to do those kind of maneuvers quite confidently without hitting something. Also, the steering, while it's got a decent amount of weight to it, it's not too heavy, even when you're just pootling about in town. It's surprisingly easy to live with this. I've loved it. The problem with some cars that have keyless go is that you don't actually have a place to keep the key in the car. You do with this R8 though. There's a little slot for it there. Neat and tidy. You won't lose that. One of the great things about this car is that even on a cruise, there's lots of insulation from this roof. You don't get too much wind noise. Tire noise isn't as bad as you might think either, even though the tires are huge. Definitely less tire noise than you get in a Porsche 911. Whenever it's raining and I can't have the roof down, I always lower this rear window so I can still enjoy the intake noise from that V10. The only problem is that when I get to my destination, I forget that I've got this down. I'll just get out of the car, walk off and leave it. And there's been many a morning when I've come to the car and there's like water all over here because it's rained in. Now I think there should be a bong to let you know that you've left this down. I wouldn't normally want another bonging sound in a car, but this one would be worthwhile. One of the things I really like about the R8 Spider is that you can put the roof down very quickly when you're driving along at slower speeds. I know you can with most convertibles, but yeah. And the reason I got the Spider was to have the roof down. And so unless it's raining, I've always got the roof down in this car, even when it's freezing cold outside. And I can get away with doing that because the heater is really, really good. So I'm just gonna bump it up to high. Oh, look, it's already on high. It wasn't on high a moment ago. Wait a minute. Is this something I haven't noticed before? Watch this. I'm going to put the roof back up. That is brilliant! I never even noticed that! Look! It's got the temperature at 22, the fan at 1. It's somehow learnt that when I put the roof down, I'm going to want the temperature up high. Do you know what? I didn't even notice that. 
I've had this car for nine months and I haven't noticed that before. Look, and now it's directing it exactly where I want it. So I want the air at my body and at my feet. Genius! Another thing that's brilliant about this car is that sometimes I don't like the look of like convertibles. I don't think the Mercedes AMG SL, the Roadster version, looks as good as the Coupe version. I don't think that the Porsche 911 convertible looks as good as the Coupe version. In fact, I don't like the look of 911 convertibles. They should never be convertibles. But this, this Spider version, I think it looks better than the Coupe. It's a great looking car with the roof up and with it down. I really love the look of the car and I think I absolutely nailed the spec. The green paint with the brown roof and the tan interior and the carbon fiber bits on the exterior plus the gold wheels with red calipers. It's just perfect, no matter what anyone else says. To be fair, a lot of people have actually complimented me on this colour scheme, though it has proved a little bit overly recognisable. There's been many a time when I'm driving down the motorway and there's someone just like level with me going, hello, hello. Yeah, <laughs> it attracts attention, I can tell you that much, and people recognise it. Maybe that's where the scratches come from. Whenever I'm driving this car, I like to have it in performance mode. So I press that button there and it opens up a valve and the exhaust makes the whole car more responsive. But it also puts your stability control into a sort of halfway house. So it's got a bit of slip. I don't want that on the road. So I always just re-engage that, go into manual, and now I get a much louder exhaust a better throttle response as well. Let me just change down the gears because I want to show you something else that you get when you're in manual mode. Look at this. I love those shift lights. <laughs> Though you don't get to see them that often because of speed limits around here. The lights on this car are really, really good. So you've got matrix LEDs as standard. You can probably see the little dots there. You can blank out part of the beam so you don't dazzle oncoming drivers. And it means that you can illuminate the road as much as possible when it's dark without bothering other people. Really helped me when I've been out on shoots and then throughout the winter months coming back on long drives in darkness. As you get older, your eyesight deteriorates and good lights on a car can make a huge difference. Perhaps the very best thing about this car is the engine though, that V10 5.2 litre. The noises it makes, they're incredible. If you get it under low, it makes this wonderful guttural sound. Have a listen. Hear that? It's like a kind of like hammer sound. So you don't have to be thrashing the engine to get some great noises out of it. Here we go, under load, high gear, fourth. Such a great noise, but it's also great when you get up in the rev range, listen. <laughs> and the performance. You don't need a car to be any more powerful than this, believe me. And the way it delivers its power is so good. It revs to 8,500 RPM. Everyone goes on about Porsche GT engines and then 9,000 RPM red light. This is just 500 RPM off it. Lovely throttle response and this. I actually think I prefer that low down rumble to the high up scream. Oh, oh those gear shifts when you're on it. They are rapid. Oh, I'm gonna miss this car. I'm gonna miss this engine. I'm gonna miss the noise. I'm going to miss the experience, you know, with the roof down, sun shining. What a great car. I've loved it. This car does feel very expensive here on the inside. You've got leather absolutely everywhere and things feel solid. The switches are nice. Things are nicely damped. It feels like an expensive vehicle, which is exactly what it is. After I'd ordered this car, I drove a blue rear wheel drive version of the Coupe and I was almost regretting my decision to go with the four wheel drive Spider because the rear drive Coupe is the best handling version of the R8 I've ever driven. However, that's if you're going to be going on twisty roads quite regularly and just going out for a blast. For everyday usability and to really experience the car to its full, this Spider with all wheel drive is the best option. Being able to take the roof off just adds another dimension to the car 
and it also adds quite a bit of weight. So if you're doing that, you may as well add the weight of the four wheel drive system. And when the road's slippy, like it is for most of the time, because it rains a lot and I had this car throughout winter, the four wheel drive system is just better. You're gonna get more out of this car and it just gives you a bit more reassurance as well. It's actually quite fun when you put the power down and you feel the four wheel drive system just sending the torque where there's the most grip. The fact of the matter is you cannot go any quicker than this car can on the road without breaking the law seriously. So there's very little to be gained by having the rear wheel drive version and the spider just with that noise. It means you're not annoyed that you can't just thrash it. You can just have fun listening to the sound of that engine because a lot of the time, you do end up on the brakes because there's always a car in front of you. Speaking of which, the brakes, carbon ceramics, definitely worth having the carbon ceramics. If for no other reason, then you don't get as much brake dust. In fact, there's no brake dust really with carbon ceramics like with steels. So your wheels don't get all dirty, which is a good thing. Also, I've had this car on track and I've driven an R8 with steel brakes on track and they just don't hold up anywhere near as well. So if you're getting an R8 and you want to go on track, definitely get the carbon ceramics. Or if you're getting an R8 and you can't be asked to clean your wheels, get the carbon ceramics. Ah, oh, such a fine handling car. Well, that's it then. My time with the Audi R8 Spider is over. The good points of this car more than make up for the bad points and I've absolutely loved my time with it. This has been my favorite ever long-term test car over my 20 years as a motoring journalist. I even prefer it to the Porsche 911 Turbo S that I had. It might not be as quick as that car or as capable or as practical, but that 5.2 liter V10 engine just makes up for it. This car will be sorely missed, but thankfully it's not gonna be sold and you're gonna keep it for their heritage fleet. So perhaps, I'll get to drive it a few more times. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. If you want to watch some more videos, click on the windows. And if you click on the CarWire logo, you'll get a nice little surprise. Thanks for watching.